what I was surprised to see is how almost every cell in the body changes its own metabolism inside the cell when we change the diet. What we eat ends up in our immune cells. We're not just feeding ourselves, our body, we are feeding our immune cells. Will these fuels that they're using help us fight cancer and fight infection, or will it hinder us? Lydia Lynch is an immunologist, and her lab is studying the effects of metabolism on immune cells like T cells. I find that up until recently, if you say you're an immunologist, people are not interested to ask a second question. <laughs> but when we talk about diet, people are more interested. If we were going to run a marathon in a few minutes, we wouldn't have, you know, a steak and a hot chocolate or something because that would leave us tired. That would be a lot of process and that would be a lot of fat and we wouldn't be able to run the marathon as well. That is the same as the immune system. If we have an infection, a pathogen in us and we get a fever, the amount of energy that that takes for the immune system to respond is actually the same as running a marathon. It's the same amount of energy. The immune system is always active, with B cells producing antibodies and T cells speeding around looking for infections and illnesses like cancer. It's always active, so it always needs energy. But when a pathogen enters or when a tumor forms, that's when it needs a lot of energy. It's crazy, like each cell really ramps up its use of energy. If we're gonna feed it, the equivalent of a steak and a hot chocolate before it has to, you know, whiz around, it's not going to do a good job. And we're going to become susceptible to infection and cancer more. And so we have to feed our body well in order for it to be able to do the job that we want it to do. I could take your T cells out of the blood and we can put them in a dish and feed them media, it's like food for cells. If I put in more fat into that media and then look at the cells, I'll see now that your cells have taken up the lipids and now they've got fat inside of them. Because fat can be toxic to the cell. It turns on protective mechanism to protect it from the lipotoxicity, from the fat itself killing it. But that's all it's doing really. It's not doing any of its original job. If we look at what white cells we have, about 10% of them are natural killer cells. Um, it's a cool name because they're natural born killers. They're ready to kill. <laughs> That's their main job. And if we take them from someone's blood and we put them in a dish with a tumor cell, they go towards it. They're attracted to it. They recognize it as a tumor and they go over to it and they stick onto it. And they have these two killing machineries, it's like a gun, perforin, that shoots the holes in the tumor cell. And then they have granzymes. Granzymes are the bullets. They go into the holes and they kill, they blow up the tumor cell. If you take these NK cells from a person living with obesity, or if you've had a very fatty meal for a few months um, and put them with a tumor cell, we were surprised. They still go over. Uh, it's a little bit slower. They still recognize the tumor cell and they still attach onto it. But now they can't fire the gun they don't have as much bullets, they don't make the granzymes. And so now you have an NK cell that can see the tumor, but it can't do that much about it. And we have billions of these cells. So, you know, if everything is working slower or not working at all, then the tumor wins the battle. It's not the case of, you know, this is the only reason you get cancer. You, know, you could be genetically predisposed and no matter what you eat and how healthy you are, you'll still get cancer. Um, but by choosing diet, you are stacking the odds in your favour. Diet might not be the answer to avoiding cancer entirely, but understanding how these lifestyle variables impact us at the immune cell level helps us get towards more targeted interventions and improved treatments. Are my cells speaking to me when I'm deciding uh, what to eat? It's taken a long time for this information to go into my head to, be, to become practical about it, I think. We fed mice a high fat diet, you know, an obesogenic diet, but the source of fat was changed. Fat from nuts, fat from plants, fat from animals. And then we've seen that over time, cancer was growing more in the mice that got fat from animals. And I was super surprised at that because we didn't design it that way. Oh my God, it really, it's not 
the obesity level. It's something happening in all the cells in response to where the fat is coming from. What we put in is more important than just the number on the weighing scales. The next day I was at a conference in California, queuing up for the dinner. And I said, do you have a vegetarian option? Which I've never done in my whole life. I'm not a vegetarian, but it, it actually really did finally hit home that, you know, I'm feeding my immune system here. I should feed it well. It's what the doctor has said for many years, right? Eat well and exercise. I didn't really listen to it for most of my life because I just thought it was just generic advice. But now we're actually seeing if we eat well, the body shifts what it spends its energy on. What we eat goes into the cell. What the cell eats changes what it makes. And I didn't like, like that advice before. Now I do because I understand how it actually works. We need collaboration between different scientists. Immunologists don't have all the information on nutrition. Nutritionists don't have all the information on the immune system. Oncologists who understand cancer better than anyone don't have the information on nutrition and immunology. It's only when we share all of these ideas and data together and be open, you know, that's the whole point of, of, of being a scientist is to serve the, the community and to, you know, serve humanity by sharing the information to hopefully get to a result that will help humanity. That only happens by collaboration. Lydia's work shows that our immune cells need to be given the right ingredients to work together successfully. And a diverse melting pot of research groups is a great way to advance our understanding of human health in the 21st century. Just make sure you give the scientists a decent lunch at the conference.